I would like to personally apologize for the introduction that you are about to receive. I want to let you know that the show after that moment is awesome. Just stick with us, enjoy the show, leave your comments, and again, our sincerest apologies for what is about to come right now. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in, one and all. Excuse me. Hold up, hold up, hold Excuse up. Excuse me. What was that? An honest mistake. What are you doing over there? That's it. We're done. It was an honest mistake. I was getting distracted by emojis in the <laughs> Slack channel. The music ah, the music caught ah. me too quick, and then it was just a welcome. Well. Is this ru- is you, the show we, ruined? We are, we are not welcome. That's what I learned today. Episode... 1,388. You're not welcome. I think it's Mike's fault. Yeah, that was, that's me. <laughs> that's on me, everybody. Thursday, March 23rd. To be fair, <laughs> what I shared was hilarious, and yes, you will was. never, ever know what it was. <laughs> I just saw it. Good work, Mike. I'm uh, I'm sorry, Foot Clan. <laughs> welcome into the show. Trending or ending on the show today, NFL news, including a trade that just went down as of this recording time, and uh, some mailbag. The Deucers are here. Today we've got uh, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, and Papa Josh in the building. The, the baldness has increased. Yes. <laughs> um, Shave your head, Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, for the for the good of the group. It, yeah, like, okay. Do the, like, should the, the Deucers be unified with, oh my gosh, with shaved so, heads? That would be so good for the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's part of the people, employment contract. Now. Right now, people walking around, they're going like, uh, oh, what was that one show? What was that one show? And they don't remember. But if you're all bald, it'd be like, oh, what was that one show with the three cue balls? Uh, yeah. The th- cue ball producers. There's the ballers, and then there's the balders. <laughs> mm, nice. <laughs> uh, think about it, okay? All right. You're the last man standing. <laughs> no, Kyle's got some hair. Yeah, and well, you know. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> The mailbag on the show today, a couple of reminders. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I encourage you to check out our personal uh, Twitter accounts, including Mr. Jason Moore's uh, at Jason FFL. He just threw up a very fun tweet. Oh, the the Bijan tweet? Where he was ranking was good. all of the different locations that Bijan Robinson could go to and uh in order of like kind of best case worst case yeah it started as a personal selfish exercise where i just simply wanted to know like what teams do i want him to go to and not want him to go to so i just i sorted all the teams ranked them out first to last and uh found out i really don't want him going to the jets that's for sure you fit you found out well, i mean i knew <laughs> yeah that. There, i mean i we could walk through it a little bit i i, I actually think we should sure um, because this is the Bijan Minute. Bijan Minute. All right. <laughs> we don't have a drop yet, <laughs> if you can't tell. Uh, here's here's your best of the best. You said the Los Angeles Chargers and Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, because both of those situations, the only way they bring on Bijan is... No going, more Mixon, no more Eckler. Exactly right. And they're going to auto- automatically go into a role where it is massive workload on awesome offenses, that's best of the best case scenario. All right, so let's move on from best of the best, which I can – Mike, do you agree with those two? You see that as being premier spots? Uh, yeah, and assuming that those the starting running backs are on a different team, then yeah, I would agree with that. Here's where it gets a little more interesting. I think I agree with two-thirds of this next one. Okay. Maybe, maybe all of it. Uh, Dallas, okay, uh, year one, you're going to have Tony Pollard there, mm-hmm. but you're looking long-term, I get it. Makes sense. Kansas City, the Chiefs, hmm. that's the one where I'm a little bit like, let's discuss yeah. it. And then the Falcons, where we know what they want to do. They want to run the football. Uh, still still need a quarterback if I want to be – if Bijan wants to be that, you know, top three guy. I yeah, think. the best part of the Falcons, and they, they should probably be first in this tier, is that they're picking at number nine. So if they pull the trigger, the, the draft capital says – He's the dude. You're not worried about anything else. He, you know, when you get a running back drafted in the top 10, they're going to touch the ball 
you know, more than anyone else on the team easily. And if they give Bijan the ball that much, he's going to do great work. When it comes to the Cowboys and the Chiefs, well, the Cowboys, we know they want to run the ball, right? They, that's what they've been talking about. They release Ezekiel Elliott, who got enough work, even with Tony Pollard, that Bijan would be fine. And Tony Pollard's on a one year franchise deal. They would probably move on later. The Chiefs are simply this. I've, it, I've, I've used that experiment before. No, but it's very, very, very different. You're talking about when they brought on Clyde Edwards Alaire, they yeah. drafted him with the thirty second pick, oh, he's first rounder, yada yada. Coming my, off a Super Bowl. My pre draft uh scouting on Clyde Edwards Alaire, he was my running back six in that draft class. I did not think he was that talented. Um and you know, that has that That's has fair. come to fruition. Bijan is actually an a, an unmissable prospect. He might not mm, be. Yes. He might not be the <laughs> um, you know best running back of all time, but he's not not great. He is <laughs> great. He can't. He can't. Why, miss. why say it that <laughs> way? You, you, Andy Reid. You don't has think a history. he can be a miss? Andy Reid. I don't think he can be a, a flat out miss. I think he could be a bust based on expectations, but I do not think Bijan. I, I watched me some AP collegiate highlights. The best of all time. And. Um, they're the only thing that make Bijan's highlights look pretty bad. When people talk about he's the so and so is the best since AP, it's like you can't go go watch what AP did in college. It was humiliating yes. to all other players on the field and absurd. So Kansas City, but it, they, it would be the same pick. It, yeah, I'm presuming they don't trade up for it, it would be the same pick as. It, that's right, and and yeah, you've got Pacheco, who's fine as a seventh round pick, and you've got oh, he would be out. Right, that's my point. Is it really would be out? Yeah. You have a history when you've got great players. When Kareem Hunt in his rookie age was a part of the Chiefs, he was unbelievable. Jamal Charles, unbelievable. Lashawn McCoy, unbelievable. When uh, Brian Westbrook. Brian Westbrook, when you've got a super talented running back, they're going to get the most out of I it. Guess, scoring I guess scoring opportunities. I guess you're right. I, I, if it happened. It's the it happening that's so such a long shot there. But if it happened, Kansas City and then Atlanta, uh, your sneaky good destinations, again, more interesting here, Minnesota, Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston, Miami, and Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, these are these are offenses that I think either, like in, this, in the case of Houston Texans, will be entirely Bijan's team or – Offenses that are good, like the Vikings, the Eagles, the Bills, the Dolphins, those teams will have so many scoring opportunities. And one of the things you have to realize is whatever team does pull the trigger on Bijan is doing it with a lot of capital. So they are going to invest. So, it, you know, the Dolphins just resigned Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson. They don't have a first. Sure, they don't. Have, I mean, I put all thirty-two teams in here. The likelihood of the Dolphins actually drafting Bijan is basically minuscule nothing. to yeah. nothing. Absolutely, I don't. I don't think that the that the world exists where that happens. But it's like you said with the with the Chiefs. If a team drafts him, that come that will after the fact be like, oh, well, they are super in on him. There's just no other way you get a hold of him. Uh, I'm not going to read them all. Obviously, you can go check them out on Jason's Twitter at JasonFFL. I will read the five in your worst list. Mm -hmm. the Jets at the very bottom because you now this is because they have Brees Hall. This is my Brees, baby. <laughs> Don't touch my Brees. <laughs> and they wouldn't. That would make no sense. Uh, Seattle. That's the scariest one because that one. That would be a Kenneth Walker. I mean, that is a, that would be a bad. That would be bad. And that would be their second pick in the first round, around pick 20. It's like a oh, perfect no. spot for him. I have already discussed briefly the idea of live streaming the first round like we did that we did the simulcast right with the horrific Colts right. game and I have not run this by you guys at all I know we do the reflection of the first round uh, live stream the next day right there's some I'm not opposed to sitting here and watching Jason react to every <laughs> Bijan or non Bijan pick I can be talked into it but the only time we're on camera is when it, it the pick is in and Goodell's walking up and he reads the pick. The other time will be filled with the deucers, like juggling. Okay, you're uh, right. There's yeah. a lot of time. Circus acts of mm -hmm. some kind. Yeah, Jeremy I'm in. shaving I'm in on his that. head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's when he shaves it. No, we'll we'll at a minimum we'll be videotaping. There'll at least be security camera yeah. footage of Jason's reaction. The other three bad ones: the Colts, obviously Jonathan Taylor, Pittsburgh. That's because 
you believe Najee, you know the Najee Harris problem? Yeah. So it, and and the Niners with CMC. The the most feedback I got that was negative on this is people refuse to believe in Najee. Like Najee is nothing Najee's to good. them. I think Najee but, is very. No, good. I would I would put up a fight on that one too because it's the same argument. Like if if he goes to Pittsburgh, he's Pittsburgh's guy. I, There's no way that Najee hurts him. Najee has over 700 opportunities in two years where he's been great with them. I can't imagine a world where it would become it, that would be a timeshare. That would be those two are in a timeshare. I again, not going to happen. And I don't you see said the, the 49ers. Doing that. That's just Christian McCaffrey. Okay. I mean that, All right. you know. All right, we will move on the ultimate draft kit available for pre-sale right now. If you get the UDK Plus, you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass. We just released a new content update post combine. Uh do not miss your opportunity to check out the newest rookie rankings. Uh, some of the trade targets from the hitman himself mm -hmm. and uh, some more dynasty stuff coming your way soon. It's the lowest possible price right now. Ultimate draftkit.com. Let's do this for a quick question. Trending or ending. All right. Trending or ending Aaron Jones. Will he finish as a top 12 fantasy running back again? He's done it somehow. Four consecutive years. This past year did not make sense. I don't know if there's a player that feels less like they've done that than Aaron Jones because he does. he's the kind of player that gives you the four touchdown or three touchdown week with a big reception, or sometimes it's just not his week. and Or two total rushing touchdowns on the year. Yeah, I mean, he had, he had 1,100 yards, just 213 carries, 72 targets. But losing Aaron Rodgers, almost guaranteed losing Aaron Rodgers. I, I think the odds of him going to the the Jets might not be 100%, but the odds of him leaving the Packers seem to be 100%. It seems very high. I was t talking to the guys earlier this morning of saying, I've now moved into, as J it, it's kind of a Jason Moore mentality of, let's just let's watch something burn down mm -hmm. for, for a little bit. Let's just watch some chaos of, the both the Jets dig in, the Packers dig in, training camp rolls around, and then Rodgers just shows up to camp. Oh yeah. Because he's like, I'm I'm, I'm on the roster. I'm here. What are we gonna do about Let's this? Play ball. Like, Some people brought up that maybe we were too hard on Aaron Rodgers or that like we need to blame the Packers because look, they've done this before. They've they had a messy ending with Brett Favre. Now they're doing another messy ending with Aaron Rodgers. And I was I was thinking about that. And I think it's just the nature of every great quarterback's kind of sunset years. I, it, this is not exclusive to the Packers. Tom Brady divorced the Patriots, right? Joe Montana divorced the 49ers and went to the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, there is a time when the franchise and the player are both kind of, they've just had enough of each other. And, sure. and it just never seems to be, it's not elegant, right? Like, there's not an elegant departure of the, the face of your franchise, it seems like, if they want to play football again. Yeah, it's a tough, tough situation, but it's one that I think most franchises would want to eventually get find themselves in. Yeah, because it means you had a great uh, quarterback now in the twilight, and you got to worry about the future. But presuming he is gone, I cannot see Aaron Jones being a top twelve running back this next year. Most of his touchdowns the last two years have been in the passing game. Eleven touchdowns receiving over the last two years, seventy two targets this past season. We don't know exactly how Jordan Love's going to play, but I'm going to assume it's going to be less than the two-time in the last three years MVP quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Scoring opportunities will be slightly down. Passing volume is probably going to be down. And this is a team then that will be playing more for the future. Not, I mean, they're going to be playing to win now, but obviously they're, they're planning – and their uh, identity is going to have to be remade. And Aaron Jones is much more part of what they were than what they are going to be. Do you I want a uh, low or what is the, the a? There's not a lot of substance to this statistic, but oh, I want to I share it, it anyway. Yeah, meaningless so, thing. Go ahead. Uh, in the past three years, Aaron Jones only has two games played where he did not have a single reception. And one of those games was when Jordan Love played the entire game. Okay, yeah, but you said meaningless. Yeah, so. I'm just saying, like, you can't extrapolate one game mm. out, but 
No, Jet. but the way that you said the end of this dad yeah. was with so much emphasis that it made it seem like it had a lot of meaning. Honestly, if I one well game, done, well done. Small sample size, one game. If I look at games played with luck, oh, he's got a with season, Jordan Love. Uh, with, with luck. Jordan Love <laughs> yeah. He's got a season total pace of no receptions, yes. Mike. That's see, that's the point I was driving home. Yeah. Career stats would be zero with love. Um, I will say that I am with Jason in that I don't think he will finish there, but I do believe it's a possibility because I think that this offense, um, the the pieces around Jordan Love, you know, can he move the offense down the field? Can it be a run centric offense that protects Jordan Love? I think that that could happen. I think Lafleur is a good coach, and Aaron. Jones is a good enough player to where you can build the entire offense around Aaron Jones. Yeah. Like that can good. be your identity. And, and I would be trying to, you know, Alvin Kamara, him, like use him as much as you can as your identity. If you want to succeed this year, is this the year the Packers take a first round wide receiver? That would be <laughs> one of the most entertaining things. Oh man! On the face of the planet, it's just like how Seattle refused to draft offensive linemen, and then when they got rid of Russell, it's like, dude, we're gonna go, we're gonna build this through our line. Would you like them to make the the Rodgers trade before the pick or after the pick? <laughs> I, oh, I want them to take a wide receiver and then trade Aaron Rodgers. I I want them to trade Aaron Rodgers and use the pick that they're oh. getting back. For a wide receiver. Okay. All right. These are all good options. Mike, are you, uh, what is your answer I, here? I lean with you, Andy, of he's so good that he, if he plays, you know, let's put him at 15 games. If he's at 15 games, he should be a top 12 guy. He's he just sitting be. there as this like obvious case for a reduced draft cost. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. So, um, will be interesting. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Ah, welcome oh, to the man. news. <laughs> Damian Harris signed a one-year deal. I see what you did there. With the Bills. I don't like it. For $1.7 million. Uh, the, the Damian Harris signing, I like very much. Uh, listen to this. I, I sat down at my kitchen table a couple nights ago, and I almost tried to draw the like circle chart of rotation of these running backs getting one year deal. It's like James Robinson to the Patriots and then Damian Harris is now going to the bills. And then from the bills, Devin Singletary goes to the Texans and like they are just rotating these one year deals where they're barely getting paid any money. And look, do I think Damian Harris is any different than Devin Singletary? Nope. Yeah, he's not. He's not much different. Doesn't this mean he is doesn't a, have value. I just it just seems like the same thing. He's a very solid running back. I think that uh, Devin Singletary, solid running back. Harris, solid running back. The question is going to be, will Harris run ahead of James Cook or behind James Cook? Last year, if you look at rushing percentage, you had Devin Singletary with forty one percent of the rushing attempts and James Cook with twenty one percent. Does that become more like? 30% and 30% and they share the load and split it evenly. No matter what, I think this is a negative for James Cook. Some people disagree with that. They say this is a great signing for James Cook because they're not going to bring in someone over the top of Damian Harris. It's really a matter of what you believe about Damian Harris. I believe he's a very solid running back that will absolutely be getting a lot of carries. He's a bigger running back than James Cook. so He's an injury prone running back. That is fair. Obviously, you know, in any backfield that's shared, when an injury happens, the other running back provides a lot more fantasy value. My my view of it is simply that these are two guys that put on different superhero uniforms for the weekend. Like it's just very different skill sets, very different capabilities, and and I think they're, you know, which one's riding the bike and which one's in the sidecar. I'm not sure. I think it might be week to week. We were so frustrated with this with the Bills over the years, right? Matt Burita had a breakout period with the Bills. Yes, he did. That so was fun. I don't view it personally as any anything different than how I view James Cook with Devin Singletary. His potential for a breakout is still there. Um, you know, Jason, you were not intimidated by James Robinson joining the Patriots. Correct. So that means you're you're obviously your belief is that 
Damian Harris is a step up from James Robinson. As you see, you see me. But both players are not getting a lot of financial commitment. Is my point. Yep, that's fair. McCall Hardman, one year deal with the Jets, and more importantly, much more importantly, uh, Jets are trading Elijah Moore and a third round pick to the Browns for their second round pick. <laughs> this good is, for you, Elijah Moore. This is the way that Elijah Moore this just has a way. chance. Yes, this is the way. Um, I don't think it's a guarantee, Voldemort needs to get back to his previous ability as a quarterback and for Eli- yeah yeah uh for Elijah Moore to be relevant but Elijah Moore was buried and dead on the Jets the Jets have gone out signed multiple wide receivers they did not have Elijah Moore as part of the plan so this is great news a lot of um fantasy managers you know drafted Elijah Moore in their dynasty leagues and they don't know what to do with him well now you've got hope and sure presumably he is the wide receiver too it could be Donovan People Jones, but he will be the slot David wide receiver Bell, still there. Uh, I believe he'll he'll be the primary slot wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. Hope is the word. It's some hope. Ronald Jones, a one year deal with the Cowboys. Uh, if he if he's on the starting roster, um, I don't know. You'll drink be, a gallon I'll, of milk. I'll, I'll be shocked. Yeah, I, I, he sounds like the kind of guy like you're like. Can we get somebody that we can cut later? Mm, yeah, that's, he's that's disrespectful that. to Super Bowl winning Ronald Jones. Yeah, Super Bowl champion. That What's is, the deal? I, How much was the deal? I think he has two. Does he have two? Yeah, Super Bowls? Uh, I saw someone say yeah, multi, multi Super Bowl yeah. winning Ronald Jones. Um, also, last year did um play in many games and had a total of seventy yards <laughs> on the season. Dearness oh, Johnson man. signed a one-year deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's it, that get used to the one years, man. These yeah. one years are just floating around. That one's interesting because, like, Jamichael Hasty had relevance well, well, for yeah, a bit. Well, Jamichael Hasty's a different skill set than Dearness Johnson, but it was kind of that if you were holding on to the the long dynasty hope for like Snoop Connor, is probably not going to go well. This is, I, I think, this is good news for Travis Etienne. Um, sure. There was a report. Uh, I think it was around the Senior Bowl, or something came out um, where they were talking about how they want to add more running backs to the roster. And so, as a Travis Etienne dynasty manager, I started to get a little bit worried. They said, "Look, you got to keep." Is that these why guys you ha- sent me that crap offer? Yep, uh, that it is, <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's why I sent half the league. Uh, can, can we? Can we? Crap can we, offers. Can we hear it? It I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't crap, crap, but it was like it was ETN and Boston. It was ETN and two thirds for Garrett Wilson. Yeah, there it was. I mean, look, <laughs> I, I said yes. Sometimes we just put it out there and then see how the person who made the offers faced. <laughs> yeah, Malfoy. I was. It's not the end of the world. It's I'll not. Yeah, it's yeah not that's trash, I retract, trash. I didn't go. I didn't go crap, crap. If but you really crap. needed a running back and somebody really needed a wide out. There is a world where they might counter that. What, what I did, <laughs> yeah, yeah. be a place that we start. That what be- I did was I I need a wide receiver. I've got uh, yeah. I've got a loaded running back room, so I just shotgunned. Yeah. I went to the, like the top wide receivers and said, "How can I try to turn Travis Etienne into a top wide receiver?" But a part of that was because it, the, the the multiple thirds I think made it worse. You were right, like, if I just offered you, you Etienne, like, you'd feel here, better about it. Here, can you throw these away from me? <laughs> So, anyways, Doug Peterson was talking about how they want to add a f- more running backs to their running back room, and so I was I was worried. But if you're bringing Dearness Johnson, and he also talked up Snoop Connor, ironically in that in that same time, and you have Jamichael Hasty now, if if these are the four running backs, I'm all about Travis yeah. Etienne. That's great. Uh, r- r- we talked about Ronald Jones, Dearness Johnson, Isaiah McKenzie, one year deal with the Colts. You know, De- Paris Campbell just left, and here's Isaiah McKenzie. All right. And did, then did we did we say Paris Campbell was on the Giants last show? I don't remember if that got covered. We did. Okay. We mentioned it briefly. We did not cover I've, it. Okay. Just we did not share any. Let it let the people know that it had happened. Uh the Athletic is reporting there's a good chance the Broncos had a running back in the draft. Yeah. Yeah. S- sounds the, right. I believe that is the same thing we said here when they signed P Ride. I said there's a good chance they're adding a running back in the draft because they will need to. Jim, you know, unfortunately, Javante is not going to be ready. It'll be very interesting to see where. Yeah. If they add a day two running back oh, man. and they signed Samaj P. Ryan, then that's the death knell for. It, it, it's the answer to the questions of 
How's Javante's health right now? How's he looking for this season? I think answer to the questions is a better phrase than death knell. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little extreme. Death now seemed like no future. Uh, yeah. I hope Javante comes back to full strength. It just won't be this season. Uh, Pro Football Talks, Mike Florio reporting. Lamar Jackson has told other teams he's ready to move on from oh, the Ravens. Man. I believe. How have we heard nothing about this? I believe that. The children are our future. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I believe Lamar Jackson will be a Patriot. Oh, okay. He's okay. putting it out there. Okay. And I think DeAndre Hopkins might be one, too. Interesting. Okay. So they're going Rams of, of uh, screw think, these picks. I think um, well, Bill Belichick, oldest coach in the league, second oldest behind Pete I think, Carroll. I think Pete Carroll's the oldest. Somehow. The time is running out here. Third year yeah. with Mac Jones, almost benched multiple times for – Zap, 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 <laughs> and I, I know it's going out on a limb. I mean, they have to, they have to move picks, uh, and they'd have to move picks for Hopkins. But I think Lamar, I think Lamar could be a Patriot, and I think this is the kind of move like they've had those moves at, as a franchise throughout the history of the team. Randy Moss's arrival, um, some of these impact signings. Have you, have you seen the last eight wide receivers they've drafted? In a list? Yes, they are. Did you throw up? Uh, I kept it in my mouth. Yeah. I had to re-swallow. Oh, the, but yeah. I, I did. Nikhil Harry might be the big winner of the group. <laughs> yeah, compared to the, the other names. I mean, uh, we don't know about um, Thornton. Thornton yet. But all right, quick break. Back with the mailbag. Uh, into the mailbag we go. I'm going to hit this drop. You ready, Mike? Yeah. Bag. Bang, boo, bang. Ooh, yeah. All right, if you have a question for the show, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button. Dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We have a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. This is Jacob from Saskatchewan, Canada. My question is dynasty-related. I've got the 102 pick, and I'm wondering how much could, should you give up to get the 101 and a chance to be... B. John Robinson. Thanks. Well, Here's a great question. First of all, bonjour. Yeah, yeah bonjour. Number, uh, let's say bonjour. Uh, number two, if you move up to the one-on-one, it's not a chance. Like, you don't have a chance at Bijan. You get to draft him. Yeah. Just yeah, just filling in there. It's 100% chance. <laughs> um, You're, I mean, I would, pro, I would start with my 102 – and next year's first, just I would throw. I don't think that's enough to get it done, but that's where I would start the bidding. I think I think that's fair too. I think that's a a, a fair value. Obviously, if you're at the 102, it projects that you might. I mean, obviously, you could have traded for that pick, but if that's your pick, your team is not that great, so it looks like it could be a good draft pick selection next year. And um, I think one of the things that could help your argument when you're talking to the manager with the 101 is if that manager has any good running backs already and maybe he's lacking wide receivers jsn you know because what is the 102 right it's either jameer right. gibbs assuming uh non-super flex it's either jameer gibbs or uh jackson smith and jigba if if that player's going to jameer gibbs now you're talking about just taking a worse running back it, it just feels like a loss for them but if you're talking about hey your team needs wide receivers you you could make an argument that the long-term value of jsn is higher let me give you an extra first round to take the best wide receiver in the class, let me have the running back, that'd be the argument I'd be trying to make. And because there's debate about number two, it's a hard argument. It's yeah. a tough one because you don't know where the pick is next year for the 101. You know, you talked about moving Travis Etienne. Like, I'd rather have Etienne than the 102 in the yeah, draft. Yeah, me too. So um, it's, it's a tough sell. I mean, you, you do have to, you have to hit the overwhelm them button. Yeah. Would you get so? What are you? Where's your line? Yeah, you have the one oh one right now. Let's. The, oh, I have the one oh two. So let's make a deal. So it's gonna be difficult. So man. Jeremy comes up and he says, "I'll give you the one oh two okay. next year's first. I'll, I'll give you uh, the two oh two and next year's first. Yeah, he and you've seen his team. Next year's first. That's gonna be a one oh three or higher. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're still gonna say no to that. 
if I got the 201, next year's first, and the 102, I I would say no. You'd say no. I would yeah. say, no. say no. That's no. crazy. What if you threw DeAndre Swift in there as like a side a side <laughs> oh, plate? Oh man, DeAndre Swift's value right now is just. I mean, if 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 he throws DeAndre Swift in, uh, in addition to, to the, everything yeah. else, I feel like I would do the thing where you accept the deal because you feel obligated mm. and then you regret it. <laughs> um, so please don't offer that. All right. Um, it's tough. It's tough. I think people are too excited. It's like the Saquon year. I mean, that pick was untouchable. And I think they were, yeah, he lost some time to injury, but everything on the field is that pick was fully justified and worth it. YouTube question from Gustin Reynolds. Gustin? Gustin. Yeah. I've I'm I've never not, heard of never Gustin. heard it, but I like it. Brother of Justin Reynolds. Uh how do I get good at fantasy? <laughs> Well, you've come to the right place. Um, I mean, the the truth is getting good at fantasy. Is this fantasy. Papa Josh? Are you Gustin? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> you know, the, the more that you're involved, the more that you pay attention. And that's why we try to make this show entertaining. We try to make it fun so that we never want to go away. We just want to sit with our friends and talk fantasy football, know all these players really, really well and, and different opinions on them, which obviously the three of us have different opinions on players all the time. If, you, if you're doing your draft, we have the resources like the Ultimate Draft Kit, the Ultimate Draft Kit Plus, tools that are proven. Uh, you know, we, we've had some research done on which, at the end of the year, championships, what tools were purchased from all sorts of different outlets, and the Ultimate Draft Kit was number one. So, you know, we don't, try to toot our own horn too much but you want to get good at fantasy following along with the nfl with a good stable of accurate information is just the best way to do it i'd say the when i was not doing the show so this is you know pre-footballers my biggest jump uh in, in fantasy football was in, during draft time getting used to doing my own personal tiered rankings where i would find the sources i like but then I would group the players together. I would just full. I would delete guys, where I'm like, I'm. I don't care. I don't care. Really care where this person is being drafted. I disagree that I don't want this person on my team. And it just kind of condenses it, gets your your targets out in front of you, and then be willing to take chances, especially on young running backs. Which that's. I mean, the the people are getting wiser to those types of things. But back those those were like the two things that really jump started me into being a good player it, I, I also will add i think part of the secret sauce hopefully of this show is to help you fill in all of the gaps between the analytics and the statistics and the numbers which is decision making right you have to make decisions throughout the season based on lots of factors that cannot always be quantified okay you, players coming back from an injury players that you have a gut feeling about you know, these in-between decisions of trades and what players you have a good... Like, there's a lot of in-between, non-quantifiable, non-stats-based decision-making in fantasy. You get to hear us do it all week long, and, and that's what we want to help you with. Uh, question here from YouTube. David wants to know, keep Kenneth Walker in the sixth or the extreme value? of Brian Robinson in the 15th. That is an easy peasy Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. I mean, the value might be better as far as total rounds what on Brian Robinson. What if I told you Kenneth Walker in the 1st or the value of Brian Robinson in the 15th? I would take Brian Robinson in the 15th and draft a good running back where's in the 1st. The, where's the where's the where's the line? What what the second? Uh, to me it would be the 4th or the uh, or I'm sorry, the 3rd. Like the first 3 rounds are there's really valuable running backs there where then you can say, okay, you're adding to it, but no, but, it's probably the second. You're right. It's probably the second. Because otherwise you're saying basically that Brian Robinson plus that third round wide out or running back is worth it. Kenneth Walker, which I mean, they're not, they're not. No. So, so Kenneth Walker, Kenneth Walker should Kenneth be Walker a top eight running back. This before Bijan arrives or after. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Hey, that you did that. that. You did that. That yeah. trade offer. I hadn't even thought it, about it. Put it in the system. <laughs> And leave it there. I don't even know if he has those picks. I was just making. And then up. on draft day, at the twenty <laughs> first pick on NFL draft day, I will go ahead and. Uh, I would. That out. 
uh, and I know, I know we've talked about it, but there is like, I don't know what I want to happen. Yes, you do. You, you want the Seattle Seahawks to draft them to watch me melt. No, I want the Jets to draft them. That, to yeah. But okay, that's not good. happening. See, the, 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 the real worst location is the Seattle Seahawks because it's actually a little realistic. bit, po- a little bit possible. Yeah, it was totally realistic. They, they're, I mean, they lost show- Rashad Penny. And they have the picks. And they have the picks. Like uh, Jason, you're not factoring in also <laughs> that you're getting Bijan. I have Walker. The show would be done. Oh, man. The show would be over. Yeah. We'd, we'd you close too. up shop. I'd be alone. Just yes. I'd be here with a couple bald guys filling in. <laughs> and a cardboard bear. And a cardboard bear. Probably card- two bears. Yeah, yeah. You'd, have to, you'd have to buy another bear. Two bears and me. <laughs> And the you two are just a soup in the I front of the studio. Would ascend and leave this planet. Yeah, that would be bad. I mean, there was a rumor, Bijan to the Patriots. That's fine. And I no, don't, no, that's it's fine. not fine because <laughs> I invested in a Ramondre dynasty situation, yeah. and it's the same boat. I would be very, very dis. I'd start the rebuild. It's going. Every single league is going to have wherever Bijan goes, just massive amounts of emotion. And that's what's so fun about it. Happened with football. Travis Etienne in the first round when when everyone yeah. had James Robinson. Mm-hmm. I had James Robinson yes. in my league, and I was like, "Let's go, dynasty! What a find!" Dead. <laughs> Poof. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. All right, uh, Instagram question from uh, Logan it says: Mighty Ducks, Sandlot, or Space Jam? Sandlot. Sandlot's number one. I have seen the other two so many more times. I can't do that. Oh, I did. I think I've seen Sandlot like once. I don't remember anything. Interesting. Sandlot is it. the keep. The trade. But you haven't seen the other. You didn't watch the others as kids. Um, that is true. That's why I'm going to trade uh, Space Jam and cut Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks is good. Space Jam is nostalgic, but it's not good. No, that's right. I have watched it as an it's, adult. It's cool. Yeah. It's not good. It's nostalgic. Yeah, Mighty Ducks is my, my keep. That's fine. All right. Uh, Instagram question from Amish. Dowell. When is it too early to mock draft? It is never too early to mock draft. Yeah. Um, I will say that there is value to... When's do- it too early to have fun? Yeah. Uh, mock drafting is really enjoyable. And one of the things that can happen... This is why um, you know, I'm, I, I play in a lot of off-season uh, best ball leagues because you get to see the before and after the NFL draft changes and, and what things really are making an impact. And you get a little bit out in front of kind of how this next year's season is going to look when it comes to is it a running back early class which this one is not this is going to be a very this year will be a lot of wide receivers in the first round mock drafting is very valuable instagram question from hey cassidy lloyd she says my husband is so obsessed with football what is some lingo i could learn that would shock him I've got Interesting. one. Interesting. If you uh, threw RBBC out there a little bit, I yeah. think that could get get the job done. Yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta go to the nerd stuff. You gotta like yeah. the talk about targets per route run, yards uh-huh. per route maybe run. Maybe some zone coverage in there. I mean maybe the maybe a little maybe. four three defense. Oh, I guess this was just obsessed with football yeah. in general. Okay. Yeah, cover two okay. shell. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, go with that yeah. one. Those are really popular right now. So, you know, they're uh-huh. they're they're stopping some of these deep throws. So you can you can bring that up. You can call edge rushers. Talk about edge rushers. All right. YouTube question coming in. Uh, what's Jason's boom boom kicker for week one? Solely one oh, says. Oh, of course you want to know. Yeah. Wouldn't you like the inside information? Do you know how many times I'm hit up from the betting markets asking me yeah. this question? No, I've I seen keep, it. I keep that in house. If I were to release that publicly, the the sports books would collapse. <laughs> The the servers would go down. So mm-hmm. no, this is uh you know t- to be released on time. Instagram question. It's a good one from uh, Saka Johnson. What on earth okay. do I do with Rashad Bateman? And this has not been discussed enough. Oh man, in the mm. in the realm of of Lamar yeah. potentially leaving. I, I was just talking to Mike yesterday when when the report was coming out that you know it's allegedly that Lamar's ready to move on. I was like. 
My Mark Andrews. Yeah. <laughs> My Mark Andrews. I, I invested in him as the future dynasty tight end to have, and I was so devastated. Whereas Rashad Bateman, I mean, he goes from huge hopefulness. Like, Mark Andrews is a known commodity in the NFL. Another quarterback comes in. He's going to be targeted. He's going to be valuable. He's going to beat linebackers. He's Bateman has nothing proven yet. And if you bring in another quarterback and they're going to bring in more wide receivers, Bateman could go up and smoke. He he terrifies me. Yeah. And you and his uh his injury, he was was he uh he Liz Frank. And so we know that the the numbers on the Liz Frank injury are you most of the time you aren't back to full strength in the the following season and, and it takes a whole another season to get back to what you could have been and we still don't we don't even know what that is he was a fascinating uh prospect like with his film was great his numbers were great he got drafted in the first round so everything is there but you're two years in and you still have no idea if Rashad Bateman is that dude or not I only want to go on the Rashad Bateman ride one time. It was not good. It was yeah, not fun. Got a little, little I was not motion sick. I was not impressed, and I had and I had to deal with the constant, I'm injured, I'm not injured, I'm injured, I'm not injured. This offseason, he's uh, shared his frustrations with the organization mm -hmm. and in very plain ways. I mean, just there, the writing on the wall right now, maybe there's a value there at some point. I'm not going on the ride. Give me another option. I mean, like you said, Andrews, he will have value without Lamar. Yeah, uh, but his upside will be. I mean, it's just like you know, what if Mahomes got hurt and Henny was the quarterback for the year? You'd be like, Kelsey's good. You're gonna start him, not the potential. Right. You, you're you're gonna lose the upside. But uh, Bateman is someone that I think you could still get a lot of value for. There are a lot of Bateman Bateman believers who, I mean, they're in every league. So he's a player I would shop and try to move on, and maybe he pops. I mean, yeah. you, you remember it, the first two weeks happen, of this last yes. year was unbelievable. I think he had a 55-yard touchdown, a 75-yard touchdown those first two. You, you talk about the Bateman uh, ride that you had last year was bad. Mine was great. I drafted him, had those first two big weeks. Uh, he, he got a little injured. I think I traded him to you, Andy, and then, and then that worked out for both of us really well. Ah, that's the... Yes, that makes far more sense for Andy's disdain for Rashad Bateman. You you drafted him, and he literally gave you nothing. Yeah, it was a bad time. Sure. Yeah, I loved it. It was a really bad time. Yeah, um, we uh, two for 59 in a score, four for 108 in a score, and then kind of fell off, got hurt. There, if it's, if it's somehow Huntley, that's going to be the worst time of your life. Yeah. I mean, that is um, the pass attempts. It's going to be bad. I mean, it's going to be real, real bad. Huntley I, threw two touchdowns. Is that right? Uh, pro, pro bowler. bowler. Pro bowler. Uh, we'll check it out. But yeah, I bet you can count correct. it on the, your hands. Yep. The thing two is, touchdowns. if if it's not Lamar, I should say, if, if Lamar is traded, it's not Tyler Huntley. It's whoever they draft. Maybe. I mean, where are they drafting? The, no, well, they get they get a first round pick from whoever if they if if he signs an offer sheet. Yeah, but I mean, New England. The other that the, pick's not going to get you nothing. Uh, in Tyler Huntley's five starts, so he had he yeah, started sorry, a big pro, pro bowler. Thank you, yeah. pro bowler Tyler Huntley's five games played as a starter last year, which is a good chunk of the season. His seventeen game pace would have been two thousand two hundred and thirty seven yards and six point eight touchdowns. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. Pro Bowler. That it could not, just be bad is all I'm so saying. So the Patriots are at – I'm just trying to work through it. No, I, for sure. Let's say it, it happens could be to a Patriots. Levis situation, right? Well, at, yes, it could be. And you're at 14, and you have an extra first-round pick the following year that, like, if, it, if somehow Richardson is dropping and, like, somehow Richardson's there at nine, Chicago's there. Like, you, you would have ammunition to move up. And go get a different guy. Not that you, yeah. Not that I, the, not that Bateman is going to be a fantastic fantasy wide receiver. Should Richardson be his quarterback? But just trying to work through the thought experiments. Fun. You want Elijah Moore or Rashad Bateman? 
Uh, That's Bate. too long. It's Bateman. For it's me. Bateman. That's okay. I think Bateman's that, a better player. It's just the the situation could go. It could go from bad to worse. Good. All right, our upcoming shows. We've got the biggest free agency off-season winners and losers. Should be a fun one. We'll get that to you next week. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Goodbye. Uh... <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.